in today's tutorial, I'll be sharing the step-by-step -step process and how I made this painting and how you can too. So feel free to paint along. And with that said, let's get into it. All right, so before we begin, as usual, I'll share the canvas settings. Uh, the dimensions here are 3,800 pixels by 2,700 pixels. And the color profile is an sRGB, as you can see here. And for the brushes that I'll be using, I will mainly be using the Creative Space Basics brush pack, which is a free brush pack that you can find on my Patreon page. I'll put the link in the description of this video. But again, it's free for everybody. And it's just got these eight brushes here. And I'll go through how to use each of these brushes in the video. They're not too complicated to use, but they are just some brushes that I wanted to include and provide for free just so you can follow along this tutorial. And hopefully you can find some use for them in your own paintings as well. All right, so to start off, I will select the flat paint two, which is the one that will follow the stroke, um, direction of the stroke. And I'm gonna select, well, first of all, I'll take the color palette. I'm gonna tap on the tab up here and just drag it out. And we can put it anywhere on the canvas, but I'll just keep mine up here at the top right. And I'm gonna select a blue closer to the greens. So closer to the left side of the blues here. And maybe more of a saturated lighter color up there should be fine. And I'm just going to paint in the whole canvas using this paint, um, using this brush here. And you can see each paint stroke gives a different color slightly. And then you can see that there's some color jitter in the uh, the stamps as well. It just gives some texture and um, and some nice some nice color variety. If you don't like that, you can go up to the brushes, tap on the brush. You can go to the color dynamic section here. And you can change the stamp color jitter and stroke color jitter. Right now I have hue and saturation turned up to 2%. If you don't like it, just turn it down to, to zero, uh, which will just none. Um, but I like it, so we're gonna go with that for now. So once we have this canvas filled in, I'm gonna select the airbrush and go up to a lighter, close to white blue. And I'm just gonna paint in the middle parts of the canvas. And so this airbrush has pressure opacity. So the lighter we press, the lighter the paint strokes will be. And I just want this just to about the top fourth up here to have this is where the transition is going to be between the blues and the in the uh, lighter blues. And maybe I'll sample this color up here just to kind of have more more of a softer gradient. And we'll just work with this until we get a nice transition. So now I can shift the color more into the blues and I'm just going to paint in at the very top here with this blue just to get a very, just the darker transition at the top here. And you see, we kind of painted over the textures that we that we originally put down, but we still have some in there. So it's still kind of visible, but it's not as, as visible as it was before. But now we have this gradient from this lighter, close to white color, then it gets up into these lighter blues. And now we have this, um, these darker, deeper blues up here. Whenever you find a gradient that you like, we can go up to the layer panel. We can tap on the plus icon to make a new layer. And now we want to get some grass in here. So we're going to have a grassy hill in the midground. And to do this, I'll go up to the brushes, I'll select the flat paint brush, and I'm going to select a warmer green color. So we'll go to the greens and shift it more into the yellows and then move this over to the right just to get a more saturated color. Something about here should be fine. And we can start to paint this in maybe just a little darker than that. And so I'm just starting at this bottom, maybe fourth or fifth of the canvas down here. I'd say maybe the bottom fifth or sixth even. Uh, so the very bottom parts, and we're just going to have this slope upwards to just under halfway of the canvas. So just something like that, just having a shape like that. And we'll just fill in this shape with this brush here. So now we have this shape filled in for the bottom part of the canvas. And this will be our grass layer. So we'll add texture and detail to it later on. But for right now, we'll get in some tree shapes. So we'll go back up to the layer panel and I'm going to tap on the plus icon to create a new layer. And now we have layer three. I'm going to drag layer three beneath layer two. So now everything we paint on layer three will be behind this foreground layer here. And now what I can do is go back up to the brushes, go to flat paint two and get a more of a green color. So I'm going to move the color slider more into the greens and I'm going to get a darker 
green, maybe less saturated. Somewhere down here should be fine. And I just wanna paint in some tree shapes. So we'll start off by just maybe a little lighter than that, but just painting in some silhouettes for the trees. We're not worrying about texture or about lighting or anything like that. We just want these silhouettes that we can then edit later. So maybe more of a triangular shape here. And I'm just kind of going back and forth um, with this paintbrush to get in these shapes. And we can use the erase tool and I have mine set to the hard round opaque. So that will give us some clean edges if we wanna come in and erase, if you need to, if you wanna clean up some of the edges of the shapes. Maybe we'll have some smaller trees down here. And we'll have another one here. And for this one, for a few of these, I'll use a selection tool. So I'll tap on this S shaped icon up here and make sure it's set to freehand mode. And then I can make these freehand selections just to get some kind of these clean graphic tree shapes in here. And then we can select the uh, gray circle to complete the selection, go to the brush and just paint those in. And I'll do another one back here as well. And I'll clean up some of this tree. I'm just using the selection tool to make it feel more like a triangular shaped kind of graphic tree here. Just paint that in. And I'll say this one here should be fine. Maybe we'll have another tree on the left just to balance it out a little bit more. All right, so I think this is good. We have these this group of trees here in the middle. We're going to add more texture and detail to it later on. Uh, maybe I'll remove one of these or maybe I'll remove this one here and then just shift these over. I feel like it was a little unbalanced. All right, something like this should be good. And so if you need to move the elements around since we're on a separate layer here, you can go up here to the move tool and make sure it's set to uniform and you can just move around on the screen. So if you want to shift these trees to be slightly more to the right or more to the left, um, I'm just going to keep them in the middle of the canvas, but feel free to move them around if you need to adjust it. Now I'll go to layer one and I'll create a new layer above layer one. And I want to get in some cloud shapes now. So we'll go to the clouds brush and I'll select a blue color here. So something maybe lighter than that, maybe a little more blue. Something like this should be fine, maybe slightly lighter. And a lot of times when dealing with color, you don't really know how it's going to look until you get it onto the canvas and see how it looks with everything else. So, um, But this should be fine. I'm just going to paint in these shapes here just to get this cloud silhouette shape in here, which we will add more detail and refine the edges and all of that later. But just to fill in these clouds, maybe the base of them can be a little darker. Much of this I'm going to paint over. So we're just kind of defining the silhouette here. And if we want to erase some of this shape, I can go to the erase tool and set it to the cloud brush. And I can just erase some of this out and it's going to be a and it will be like a cloud shape erase mark. So it's not it's not going to mess up the feel of the clouds too much. It can kind of help sculpt these clouds a little bit. All right, and just working with the silhouette here, making sure that it looks good. And now that we have the cloud silhouette in, we will add lighting and some more detail to it later. But I want to move on to the grass layer just so we can kind of build all these elements up together. And so for the grass, we'll go back to layer two and I'll start painting. I'll go to the flat brush. I'll start painting in some textures and some details onto this grass. So I'll sample this color here, just this. It doesn't really matter too much, but just sample a color for the grass and we're going to bring it down a little bit and more into the greens. So when I say bring it down, I just mean uh, make it darker and I'll just start to paint in with this slightly darker green color, just some grass in here just to get in some texture and some form onto this hill. All right, and we can also sample this color and shift it more into the oranges and have it slightly lighter, just a little bit lighter. Just where the, maybe some highlights, maybe a little more yellow than that, but just paint in some highlights on this grass too. So just parts where the sun is hitting a little bit more. and create some form here. So I'm just trying to build up form on this hill so it feels like it's three dimensional. 
and it feels like it curves in space. We don't want it to feel flat. Um, so with using these values, we can make it feel like it is three dimensional. And I'll actually go to the flat paintbrush here and I'll change the color dynamics. So I'm just gonna shift down the color jitter. I feel like it was a little too strong. Um, by the time you, by the time this video is out, the, the brushes will be updated, so you, you shouldn't need to do anything. But I'm just going to shift it down to one percent, and um, just so there's less of a drastic change. I think that's better. So yeah, we'll just continue building up these textures here, um, just playing. And once we get more colors onto this grass, we can then sample the colors, and we don't have to keep going up to the color palette here. So the more colors we get in, the more uh, we can just sample what we've already put down. We're just really just focused on form. We're gonna have some shadows coming in uh, from the right side of the screen going towards the left. Uh, we'll do that later on though. But um, just, just mentioning that, just to keep it in mind. But yeah, this is gonna be a very warm scene. So the local color of this grass will be more of a green, but since this is kind of a sunset or maybe a sunrise type of scene, the um, the sun is going to shift the grass to feel a lot warmer and feel a lot more orange and yellow. So just considering that when I'm painting here, but again, working on this form. So like this lighter yellow streak going kind of diagonal like this, this could be like a peak or the top of kind of a hill. And then it dips down and it gets darker down here as the form turns downwards. And we can use the airbrush to get more of a softer transition so like have a softer shadow here we'll just sample this green and softly paint in with the airbrush here just to make it feel a little less drastic when the colors shift or when the colors change and you may be wondering why not just use the grass brush that i have and i'll use that in a moment but i don't want to start off with that uh, at least not right now because if i use this grass brush to get in grass um, in the kind of the mid ground or background, it will start to get a little too noisy, in my opinion, because this is so far away that like, we wouldn't see all these details anyway, you see, and just as a personal preference, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to have it be this noisy yet. So we will get to that in a moment. But it will be more of like an addition to the to the grass that we've already painted. I don't want to rely too much on the grass brush. It's more of a more of something to add to get some quick textures in or just to add some final touches later on. All right, so for example, right now, I think I could get in some of this grass brush. So we'll just select the grass brush, make, a, make it a lighter color. And maybe down here, we can paint in some, in the foreground, just some grass textures. I'm just stamping this in um, to get some quick textures. Don't wanna overdo it. I wanna have a nice combination between the paint and the grass brush itself, so it doesn't feel like one of them is is um, is too much, if that makes sense. So go back to the flat paintbrush, and I'll start keep on painting this, some of this form. And now I'll switch to the rectangle paintbrush, so just to get a different feel with the uh, paint textures in here. Just again building up this grass. It can be tedious, but um, this will probably be one of the more tedious parts of this painting. But again, we, it's kind of necessary just to build in this form and really make this feel three dimensional. And you really could use the grass brush to fill in more of this area. But again, I just, I like to paint this in by hand. It gives more of a, of a different feeling to me, just more of a kind of a painterly feeling rather than just having it feel too repetitive or too stamp, stamp like. So I don't, I don't want it to feel too much like just a stamp that I've used everywhere. So I just try to use that sparingly, but again, feel free to do, to do whatever you want there. All right, so along the very edge of this grass, I'll get more of an orange color. And I'll break some of this shape just to have it be less clean and have it feel more like it's grass. And now what I can do, I feel like this grass layer is slightly too light. So I'll go up here to the adjustments tab and go to the hue, saturation and brightness. And I'll turn down the brightness by 
about 2% to 48. And I'll turn up the saturation by about 2% as well. And this is what it was like before. And now after it just feels more, uh, more how I want it to. Right, and we'll just keep building up this form. We don't want too much contrast with these details. So I'm trying to stay conscious of how much contrast I have with the values. So I don't want the values to be too dark next to values that are too light, which will create too much contrast. And I, in general, just don't want too much contrast on this uh, grass layer anyway. Maybe we can get some more grass textures in here. So I'll go to the grass brush and just paint in some more. Some stamp brushes. Uh, just maybe in some of these areas down here at the bottom. So I'm keeping the brush bigger towards the bottom. And then as we go further back into the scene, we'll make this brush smaller. So we have a perspective uh, with the grass. So it feels like it fits in perspective. So the grass strokes that we do up here should be smaller than the ones that we do down here, uh, just because they're closer to the viewer. And I'll get some color variety in here. I'll just get this kind of pink color here just to tap that in. You don't need to do this, but um, if you want, just get some some color pops in there. But it's all subjective, so maybe you don't think that looks good. So that's fine. Do whatever you feel like looks good. I just want to get some color variety in there. I'll just go back to the rectangle paintbrush here and I'm just painting in some more of these grass strokes and I'll use a selection tool too so I'll go up here to the s-shaped icon maybe just make these selections here these kind of these grass like selections tap on the gray circle select on the round brush and we can paint that in all right now I am going to still working on the grass but I'm going to sample this dark color and just make it even darker and I want to get in some darker grass shapes in here. So I'll make a new layer above the grass layer just in case this doesn't go well and we need to erase or go back and delete it or whatever. And I'll make some selections here using the freehand selection tool of these grass blades. And again, just on a separate layer. So we have more control over it if we need to erase some of it out and not affect the grass below it. And maybe we'll make these lighter. I'm not sure yet. I'll test it out and see but we just want some shapes in here to make this feel more like grass mainly sticking to the foreground as well because the mid ground and you know further back into the grass layer we're not going to see these details and i'll use the airbrush to paint these in maybe we'll go with a lighter color here so we'll just get this lighter saturated green just paint the tops of these grass blades in just doing the tops and the bottoms start to get like a transition a little bit darker so it has a gradient to them so the roots of the grass will blend more into the into the ground below it i'll erase some of these out i feel like these were a little too strong but yeah for the most part that works i'll go back to layer two and continue to work on the grass beneath just using the round brush here to just lightly some, take out some of the contrast. So I'm just using a lighter color and softly pressing over some of the darker areas just to get a light wash um, over those areas. All right, now I'll go back to layer five, use a selection tool, set it to freehand, and I'll make these selections in here. And I want these to just be little darker patches of grass, maybe some, some little, just maybe some areas of shadow or little just darker parts make a bunch of these. So I'm just making a selection, tapping on the gray circle and then going to make a new one and they're all being saved. So you can see like this selection here is saved and this one too. And we can do a bunch of these. And when we're ready, we can tap on the brush icon up there and get the brush that you wanna use, get the color that we want. So like a darker green and we can softly just paint these in maybe lighter than that. I think that was too dark, but you can see they all get painted in at the same time. So it just saves a little time and maybe, maybe a little lighter than that. I think that was too dark and something like that's good. All right. Now we can create a new layer above layer five. We'll collapse layer five onto layer two as well. And now with this layer six, which is this new layer we've made, I'll tap on the layer, set it to clipping mask and I'll tap on the N, the letter N, which is going to bring up the blend mode. 
settings and I'll move it to multiply and multiply is just going to help us make shadows. So everything that we paint down, we'll still be able to see the paint below it, but it's just going to make it darker. So I'll select the round brush and I'll use the selection tool, set it to freehand mode. And I'm just going to draw in these shadow shapes. So they're these, they're kind of going up the hill like this. Maybe some trees off the screen are creating these shadows. And they're these very long shadows. Again, this is a sunset or a, maybe a sunrise scene. So they're, we're going to have sh long shadows. And we can complete the selection. So once we have the selection made, now I can select a lighter blue. Pretty, pretty light. Um, pretty neutral as well. And I'll just paint in the whole selection that we've made for the shadows with that color. And now we can still see the details beneath it, um, but it has a darker layer on top of it. And we can adjust or edit these, uh, some of the edges of the shapes as well. So like right here, I'm just cleaning up the edges and we can add to it if we want to have more shadows, for example, if I want maybe a shadow at the very bottom of the screen here, maybe right here as well. And I'm flipping the canvas just to see how everything looks. And maybe I'll erase some of the edges out. So I'll go to the erase tool, go to hard round opaque, and I'll just erase some of these just to make them thinner the further back in the scene the thinner the paint strokes will need to be just because uh how the perspective works so we just just erase some of this just to create some detail as well and maybe i'll connect these two shadows here all right and Another thing I'll do is go to the erase tool and just erase some kind of these grass strokes into the shadows just to have it feel like there's grass blades that are kind of popping up into the shadows themselves. And again, the closer to the viewer, the bigger these grass blades will need to be. Um, and the further back, the smaller. Again, just that's how perspective works. Maybe I'll make some videos in the future on perspective. Um, it's a tricky subject, but once you get the hang of it, it's not as bad as it seems. And it's really important for building up form and um, and just believability of a scene and real, realism in a scene. So hopefully I will make some videos on that if that's something y'all would be interested in. And then like right here, I can get some grass blades in here as well. So maybe something like this doesn't look perfect yet, but we're going to adjust this and we'll make it better. But right now, again, it's, it's a start it's getting some, uh, getting some shadows in here. I, it's uh, the shadows are a little light. I think like down here in this area, the bottom right, I feel like they could be darker. So what I'll do is duplicate this whole layer. So layer six, I'll just swipe it to the left and I'll tap on duplicate. And now you can see it just stacks another multiply layer on top. So everything just gets like twice as dark. Um, but I don't want this to be this dark because you see like this creates a lot of contrast up here because the grass up here is so light. So what I can do is go to the erase tool, go to the airbrush, make sure we're on the second uh, layer six that we've made. And I'll just erase some of this out just to create a gradient. And now we can erase it down to here. So just the, the top or the uh, further portions of the shadows can be erased out completely. And then down here in this bottom right corner, we can kind of leave that there. So now we have this darker shadow and then it gets lighter and lighter the further up the hill we go. And I think that is starting to look much better. And it's realistic. So shadows, uh, the closer you are to the base of the source of the shadow, like say, for example, we have some trees uh, right here. The closer to the base, the more of the ambient occlusion there's going to be and the more of a gradient, a darker gradient there will be transitioning. So the further out we get, the lighter the shadows will be anyway. And I can even go to the original layer six shadows and maybe just even erase some of this out on the very edge just to kind of follow that same that same thought. Not too much, though. I feel like I just did a little bit too much there. Only a little bit. 
to get some of the more of a gradient and less of that contrast. And I'll erase some of this out too, just to have it thinner up here. All right, so I think the grass is looking pretty good. We'll edit some more of it. So I'm gonna remove the um, shadow layer, or at least I'm gonna hide it from view. So I'll just tap on the check marks or the checkbox here just to remove it from view. Because if I keep it here and I, and I select this color here, and because I wanna to continue to paint the grass. So let's go to the grass layer, layer two. And I if I select this darker green, it has a multiply layer on top of it. So it's gonna give me this darker green sampled. You can see we're here on the color palette. So when I paint, it's not gonna give me the color that I really want, which is this color here. So I'll just hide the shadow layers from sight for now so I can continue to build up this texture and not have the shadows interfere with anything. And, um, and I'll use the flat paint brush again, and we're on layer two, so the original grass layer, and I'll just build up some more of this form here. And once we have it looking good, we'll, we'll put back on the shadows, the shadow layers. But I just wanna get that out of the way or get those out of the way so they're not, um, so they're not obscuring anything or affecting anything or just kind of, you know, just generally getting in the way of, of painting. Because the blend mode layers do act differently uh, than regular normal paint layers. So they can sometimes get a little confusing or tricky. All right, and I will, I'm using the um, rectangle paintbrush here. I'll just get some darker areas. So I'll just sample the darkest color here, make it slightly darker and make these little pockets of darker grass in here, mainly in the foreground. Okay, so I'll turn back on the shadow layers, just see how everything's looking. And I'm pretty happy with it, just erasing some of the shadow out here just to create some more of this grass shape um, going into the shadows. Just refining some of the edges and textures is really what I'm doing, but that should be fine. So now we'll go on to the trees and just add some texture and lighting to the trees. So I'll make a new layer above the tree layer, set it to clipping mask, and I will go to the airbrush and I'll just sample this color here, this grass color um, right here. And just very, very softly, well, maybe I'll make it more of an orange color, maybe more saturated and very softly just painting along the right side of the tree. Since this lighting is coming from the right side of the canvas, I should have mentioned this earlier, um, but the lighting is coming this way. So we want the right side of these trees to be illuminated slightly by by a warmer color and like here on this tree here i think i did too much so i'll just go to the erase tool use the airbrush and just take some of it out we don't want it to be too drastic but just to get some sunlight soft transitions and i can sample this green that we use for the trees make it darker and then paint a little bit on the left sides just to get more of a, a shadow side as well not not major changes right just very subtle now I'll go to the round brush and I'll paint in some details on these trees. So maybe just creating some more form onto them just so they feel less like flat shapes and more like actual trees. All right. And I will go to the tree layer and I will sample the lighter color, make it just slightly lighter and I'll paint in some lighter details onto the tree, just maybe some highlights. All right, so now that we have these trees looking pretty good. I'm going to go to the cloud layer and I will make some uh, some lighting and detail onto the clouds. So I'll tap on the plus icon above layer four and set it to clipping mask. So now everything that we paint will be confined to the shape that we've made because I, I think the shape that we made is fine. And I'll go to the clouds uh, brush and we'll sample this blue just to have a base color to work off of and we'll bring it into the yellows or the oranges here 
and I am going to get a much more saturated orange, very light, maybe like a yellow color here. Yeah, something like this, maybe lighter than that. And I'm just gonna paint in, again, the lighting is coming from the right side. So it's kind of coming from uh, up here, coming down diagonally into the scene. So we want the right sides of the clouds to have this lighting. And so I'll just paint this in using these very warm light colors here along the right sides and the top sides of the clouds. And so a very brief, rough explanation of how light fall off works. Um, the, the lighting, the direct lighting is this yellow here, uh, but we need to get into the blues. We need a transition into the blues. So how can we do that? Well, if we look at the color palette here, see this color, if we sample it is about here, up here. And we need to get to this color here which is in the blues and it's darker. So if we start in this yellow section, we can get to the blues by going around the palette this way. So we go through the reds, through the purples, pinks and purples, and then into the blues. And that's how we'll do this. So we'll start off with this yellow and I'll slightly make it more orange and um, maybe a little less saturated. And then we can get some of that in here. And then once I paint that in, I can transition this more into the reds or the more of the orange reds get some of that in here and then we're slowly getting closer and closer to blue the more that we do this so from here i can shift this into the cooler reds and in the pinks maybe have it even less saturated and darker and we're darkening it and making it less saturated because that is uh because the blue is darker and less saturated so we have to get we have to meet that blue to create that nice um, gradient or that nice transition from the lighter side to the blue side and doing this is getting in some pops of color here so we have these reds these pinks and um and it's just a much nicer transition than just going from for example here this yellow to this purple to this blue down here so we'll just continue this keep going to the purples and then eventually deep down here will be the blues that is a very brief explanation on light fall off. Um, hopefully that makes sense. I may do a video in the future on that as well, if that's something that y'all would be interested in seeing. It would take much more than a few minutes to explain, but that's just kind of what I'm thinking of when I'm painting these uh, colors on the clouds. And so I'm using the round brush just to paint in some more harder edges. Everything that we've painted so far for these clouds was very soft edged. And I want to have more of a contrast to the soft edges by getting some hard round edges in here. So to do that, just using this round brush, but we'll get to that. We'll get to the details later. I should probably go back uh, to the cloud brush and add some light fall off to this part as well. So again, yellow, we're going to transition into the oranges. We can just sample the colors that we've already put down really uh, transition to the oranges get some of these reds and maybe some purples in here as well. And now we have so much more color than just using yellow and blue or yellow and that desaturated purple. All right, and so now We've got these colors in here. It doesn't look amazing yet, but now that we have all the colors in, now we can start to refine the shape and add um, and make these clouds feel a little bit more three-dimensional, like they have more form. So I'll go up to the brushes and use the round brush. I will sample some of these colors just to get some harder edges. But first I'll actually um, collapse layer eight onto layer four so we don't have to worry about clipping masks or anything. And so now it's all on one layer and I'll start painting in some cloud shapes just using the round brush. And as mentioned earlier, this brush does have pressure opacity. So the lighter you press, the lighter the paint will be. So we can really get in these gradients. See, like have a soft wash down here without it being just a solid color and just building this up slowly. It's kind of like the grass. It may be a little tedious, but it is something that uh, just slowly has to build up and I guess you just kind of have to have patience with it. It's one of those things where 
just takes time. And yeah, you could use a cloud brush to just stamp all these things in. You could use the cloud brush that's in this brush pack to just stamp everything in. But as you can see, it seems kind of flat. And I mean, I could make this look more three-dimensional if I spent more time with that brush, but I like to have some variety of brush strokes. So I don't want everything, like I said with the grass brush, I don't want everything to feel like I just used one brush to do it. And I'm gonna clean up some of the edges here so you can see I'm kind of, all these edges are very cloud-like and I'm just going over them a little bit with this brush to have some cleaner edges in some areas, some harder edges. I don't wanna do it everywhere because I do want the clouds to still retain some of that softness, but some of the edges can definitely get some of that hard edged round brush. Maybe we can get more oranges into here and this whole area could have more of an orange feel. Just again, it takes time. So I recommend doing studies of clouds as well. If you have, if you don't do much of that, um, trying to practice drawing and painting clouds will definitely help just know how form works with clouds and and um, how perspective works with clouds as well it's a good thing to study and really studying anything you're trying to paint just try to find some references and do some practice study um, and have some fun with it because that will really help you out in terms of creating form and just trying to have your paintings feel more believable and more how you want them to feel. So I'll make a new layer above the cloud layer and it's still for clouds, but these clouds are going to be uh, closer to us. So they're going to be kind of in front of, of these lighter clouds. And this is just helping create some depth. I'm doing it on a new layer because I don't want to affect uh, or have anything affected below. So for example, I can go beneath and paint behind it and not have to, you know, affect it. Or I can just move it around if I want and um, not have the clouds that I painted below be affected. So for these on the left side, maybe I'll have um, more hard edged along this whole side. Get some more vibrant oranges in here as well. But having realistic light fall off or maybe even exaggerating how light fall off works can really help get more colors into your scene like I mentioned earlier. So instead of just having these yellows and blues and having it feel kind of flat or maybe just like the colors are a little muddy, now we have an excuse to get oranges and reds and purples. And I mean, these purples here may not even be that realistic, but you can exaggerate things, you know, and, um, and that's one of the cool things about art and painting. You can exaggerate reality to make it feel more vibrant and make it feel however you want it to feel. So um, using light fall off is a cool way to do that. So hopefully y'all like the brushes that I've included uh, on the Patreon page. They're free. Again, they're free to everybody uh, who goes to the page and just you can download it there. You just download the file and you can import it um, into Procreate and they're not difficult to set up. Click import and they should be there. But yeah, hopefully y'all like them and they're just brushes that I like to use and that I've found some particular settings that I think help out. Uh, in my opinion, they just make things a little bit easier or just maybe a little bit more what I like to do. Um, you could still make this painting without it. I mean, Procreate has grass brushes and they have a cloud brush. Um, they have a round brush as well, for example. So, I mean, you don't really need them to make this painting, but I just thought maybe it would be something to maybe help people out or just share some of, share some of my brushes here. All right, I'll add some lighter white close to white, uh, these whiter yellows along here, just to define some of this form more. We don't want to go too much with the detail on these clouds, but I do think having some white in there would be better just to have a little bit of like a highlight. 
So whenever I add new things or subtract things from the painting, I try not to do too much or to make it too much of a drastic change. So for example, like on the grass layer here, if I was to paint in some highlights on this grass, I wouldn't want it to be this light. And like for example, this is too light to me. Maybe it's not terrible, but it's it's too light to me because um, now this area is starting to gain too much attention. And we want the contrast to be where we want the viewer's eyes to go. So in this painting, it's these trees in the middle. Maybe we could have a character standing in front of these trees. Maybe we could have, I, I don't know, maybe, some, uh, maybe we want the character's eyes to be up here and right here. These are the main two focal points. Um, but the point is this part of the grass wasn't. So having this type of value contrast in that area is too much. So if I want to have some highlights here, I can sample this color, make it lighter and just just slightly lighter. And you can see this is much less of contrast, much less of a drastic change. And it's much more subtle. So we still get that highlight in there. We don't have to sacrifice the highlight from the from the grass. We can still do that, but it's not as drastic. And we still focus on the main elements like this and like this. So the point that I'm trying to make is, right, I try not to add too much, whether it be too many details, too much contrast. I try to slowly work things up and just see how everything looks together. And that's why it's important to stay zoomed out and just kind of take in everything from time to time and just evaluate how everything's going because um, it's easy to get lost in just painting and just having fun with details and all that and lose sight of, of what's really important with a painting, which is making sure that we get our message across, whatever it is that we're trying to tell, whether it be look at these trees right here, you know, whether it be look at this character that's standing up here, whatever the case, we want that to be uh, the clearest, the clearest message in, in the painting. So in this case, it's really just a painting of these trees. Um, so these are kind of the focal point here in the middle. And I will start to paint in some branches to make these trees just feel a little more believable. Don't want to do too many of them. And there we go. Now I feel like they just read more as trees. All right, and so now the clouds look pretty good. I feel like they have more form to them and they feel like they fit more in a three-dimensional scene. And I'll make a new layer above layer six and select the airbrush. And I want a warm color. So we'll go to the oranges and maybe get like this somewhat saturated orange, pretty light. And we're gonna make this layer a overlay layer. So we'll scroll down to overlay, select overlay and uh, paint some of the edges of these clouds with this airbrush. And this is just creating a glow around the clouds. So overlay is basically the opposite of the multiply layer. Instead of making things darker, it's just gonna make things more saturated and slightly lighter. So I'm just gonna do that just to get some glow in here. And this can be overdone. See if I do too much of it, it just makes everything feel like a filter. So we don't wanna to do too much. Just lightly do this in uh, some areas. And we'll do uh, the edges of the clouds as well, just to um, or of the trees rather, the edges of the trees on the right side, just to make them uh, have some more glow on the side that's being hit by the lighting. And maybe on the grass as well, we can have some of this just every now and then, not too much. And if we need to, we can turn down the opacity. Uh, if you tap on the, the letter, so this in this case, the letter O, it'll bring up this menu. You can turn down the opacity. Um, I'll keep it at 100 because I don't think I need to turn it down much. I'll now go to a new layer above it, select the round brush, and I'm gonna go to the selection tool and just get in some bird shapes up here just for some final details. And I can paint those in. I'll use a, I'll sample the sky color and I'll just make it much less saturated and darker. And I'll just paint those birds in. Uh, actually, maybe I'll do a white color. So we'll, we'll just make it pretty much white. And um, yeah, I think that's better. 
and I'll just clean some of these shapes up that I've made. They were a little messy. And now we have some birds and I can move them around, fit them where I want them, maybe somewhere up here. And I'll turn down the opacity just a little bit so they're not as, so that just so they're not as strong. And so from here, I'll just continue to build up some details. I'll probably work on the grass a little bit more just to get some more of these highlights in here. So we can go back to the grass layer and I'm just sample this color. I like how this, uh, this highlight in this area looks. So I'll do more of that around certain areas. And I'll make a new layer above the grass layer. So above layer two. And I'm going to sample this light color here. And I feel like it's hard to tell in my painting uh, where the grass ends and where the clouds start. So what I'll do is, like I said, sample this lighter color and just paint along the edges. And now I start to see more of the grass. And it, it's, it makes sense because the lighting could be hitting the top of the grass right there. So it's not like it's not like it doesn't make sense. So I think I can get away with that. And the clouds themselves, I think I could go to the cloud layer and just paint in the bottom of the clouds a little bit darker down here at the base just to have more contrast. So we can see where the grass ends and where the where the clouds begin. And I'll go back to the grass layer here, just clean some things up. Uh, for the most part, though, I think this tutorial is about good. Like I said, I'll just be cleaning some things up, adding some details and refining what we have here. But again, for the most part, just putting the final touches and finishing details on everything. So again, these brushes are free on the Patreon page, so the link will be in the description. Feel free to download them and import them. Hopefully it helps and hopefully this tutorial helps. So thanks for watching. And as always, stay creative.